gonna have. It's gonna be the second installment of my little series discoveries at the Met and it's gonna be a very short one for the end of the year. Not too much information but this time, so the first time I was introducing this Kosuka by Funada Ikin with the ship motive and this time I want to introduce a blade which is not interesting per se but which has a very interesting inscription and I want to talk about the backgrounds and the meaning of this inscription. So first of all the blade Blade is a large, magnificent Naginata no Oshi with Okisaki. <coughs> Looks like Nambokcho at first glance. And I had it out with Ogawa Sensei. And the polish polish is not good because it has an old Shirasai. It doesn't even have a habaki. So I was looking at the blade and said, yeah, looks like Nambokcho, maybe Shisu but doesn't look right, so Ogawa Sensei, yes, it's a Shinshinto copy uh, with by Kiyomaru school, probably Kurihara Nobuhide. So okay, I was on the right track. Then we took the hilt off. So another shot of the tip, as you can see, it's out of polish. It's, but it's a, it's a massive, impressive blade. Then you have the tang and with the inscription side and this is what uh, when you take the hilt off what gives you another hint, hint for that it's not Nambokcho mm -hmm. and that someone was messing with the patina and I can show you if you take a look on the, the patina you have very regular rust marks over the file marks which are like just someone putting the, the acid on with a brush so it's very uniform and also the the inscription is very raised, it's not worn down like it would have been via Nambokcho Nakago. But not, that's, not the, that's not the topic of the talk. I, was, I want to focus on the inscription. So, interesting, on the Omote side, it is signed Kane Uchi Age, so supposedly a shortened Shiso Saburo Kane Uchi blade. And on the other side is this interesting inscription Ningen. Mukotsu. And this means literally humans have no bones. <laughs> so of course the first thing you think that refers to the cutting ability because it's so sharp it cuts through a person as it has no bones. And I was digging into where are the original of this this inscription on sword blades. So I found two two traditions. The first one was Oda Nobunaga. Oda Nobunaga was seeing one of his retainers testing a blade by Osafune Kiyomitsu. It was going so well through the poor guy because he was testing it on a criminal. It was cutting so well that the guy said, yeah, this blade is like as this uh, fellow has no bones. And Oda Nobunaga was so impressed that he allegedly had it confiscated because he wanted it. <laughs> so he got the blade. He then gave it to his son Nobukatsu, and Nobukatsu gave it to his son Nobuyoshi, and then it was handed down within the family of Nobuyoshi until the late Edo period when a samurai was writing a report that he has seen it, and that's where the, where the lead ends. So this blade is no longer around, nobody knows where it is. This and Kiyomitsu then I was uh, digging some more and I found a more tangible tradition about this inscription, which is kind of all also connected to Oda Nobunaga. And it's about this guy, uh, Morinaga Yoshi. So Morinaga Yoshi, he was a retainer of Oda Nobunaga. He was fighting the first battle for Nobunaga when he was 14 years old. And when he was 17 years old, he was fighting against the, the Iku Iki that Nobunaga had troubles with. And he was coming from a family of uh, renowned uh, Yari fighters. So he went into battle with his Chubonji Yari, you know, the cross-shaped Yari with, by Izumi no Kami Kanesada, no Sada. <coughs> and uh, Nagayoshi, the legend has it, that he was uh, decapitating 27 enemies in this battle with his Yari. And that's when he thought, oh, this is cutting like, as if the enemies have no bones. 
and then after the battle he had the first part of the inscription Ningen engraved on the Yari on one side at the base and the other part of the inscription engraved on the other side and there's some gruesome descriptions <coughs> that Nagayoshi was stabbing the enemies in the throat with the, the, the tip parts and then just kept pushing until the Chumonji part decapitates the person. Mm -hmm. So pretty brutal and he later fought many more battles for Nobunaga and he was so ruthless that they called him the devil. So luckily this blade was handed down within the Mori family And it is said that the Mori family, whenever they had to, they were daimyo later, and whenever they had to proceed to Edo in the course of the Sankin Kotai system, they were parading this famous Ningen Mukotsu Yari because they were so proud of, of the tradition. So, as you can see, this is like two, two views from such a Sankin Kotai, and there were the banner bearers, and there were also the spear bearers, and so it's, it's possible, like here, for example. That someone was the famous Kanesada <coughs> Jumonji Yari to Edo. Also, this Yari was then made it into those Edo period sword books. For example, 1796, the Honjo Kajiko and the Ka Kokon Kaji from 1816, which you can see, I can show here again, you have the, the Ningen part on one side and the Mukotsu, the no bones on the other side. And I, was, I wanted to use this, this little history to make you aware of this uh, tradition. When the, the first sword books came out in the Edo period and they were really very much sought after that when the people saw those famous blades in there with the nicknames, they started to nickname their own blades like this from, the, from those saw publications. So you find several blades with the Ningen Mukotsu, the humans have no bones inscription. So this the, this the Viscount Mori, I wanna talk to him, I wanna go back to him later, that's the Yari. For example, I've come across one blade that has it in Kinsogan inlaid that was supposedly worn by one of the Shinsengumi guys. <coughs> So, when you have those nicknames, you usually they are not limited to one blade, you can find in several old blades. So the Yari was handed down within the Mori family until a Viscount Mori Toshinari. And it was in 1940, it was on display at the Yushukan Museum in Tokyo, with the, that's associated with the Yasukuni Shrine. <coughs> so we do have pictures of this Yari, it does exist. There is some legend and it was later presented to the emperor but most people think it's still within private possession of the Mori family. I have not been able to trace it down any further from here but it does exist. So this blade lives. This is the one I just showed you and then I want to go back to more some more of these cutting test inscriptions and nicknames. For example there's this very famous one uh, Sasa no Tsuyu, which means just dew on bamboo grass, like as the dew is dropping down so smoothly, that's how sharp the blade is cutting something. And you can find it on many blades. For example, the one on the left is, uh, I think it's a Hasebi blade, the one on the right is a uh, Sodenbi Sen Kencho, all they have the Sasa no Tsuyu nickname inscribed. There are two more place with the Sasa no Tsuyu. Here on the right this is a little variant. It says Kusa no Tsuyu, so dew on, on grass with the same meaning. So you find these nicknames, these famous nicknames on, on several blades. And for example we have another one. It's called Kago Tsurube. It means literally a basket as a well bucket, which makes of course no sense if you lower down a basket the water will flow out of course but that's how that's how uh, smoothly easily the water flows out of the basket that's how how well the blade cuts and also this is found on, on several blades <coughs> you have it on the Kanesada on the very left side you have it on a what is this uh, Tsugu Shige in the middle and on the right uh, it's another Kanesada so this is what's 
what was the second part of my of my very brief talk that we, when you have in famous inscription these are not uh, not limited to one blade you find them inscribed on on many different blades so and that's gonna be the end of this very brief talk any questions sure what the oldest one is because the, those that I have seen are mostly Kin Sogan May which were added in the early Edo periods so I would love to see it being inscribed contemporarily to where it was made maybe Muromachi that would be my guess is there anything else that you on real off topic but that you found that the Met that you're working on. You don't have to give it up, but I mean, mm -hmm. there are there other neat things that you've discovered recently? Or? Uh, I have discovered very nice uh, silver clad Tachi and Tanto Koshirai, which are all with engraved in gold and silver fish. It's all across, <coughs> all fish themed. It's late Edo, and it's not initially a pair, but they're all the same. They have the same motive, so I want to put this out on display. All the way for the before the end of the year, because it would they go very nice together. And else, I am still focusing on uh, describing all the sword fittings. There are some nice ones, so we have much more about this covers in the mid to go. Good. So there are gonna be more parts like this. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Yeah, sure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.